like fishing at SeaWorld Centre, mate. Big fish that is. Is it a big one? <laughs> what else can it be? Well, there we go. Absolutely stunning creature. Lovely times. Always levitating, you know, punching the air and walking around in the days. Hearing the fish jump and seeing it clear the top cord of my net and off out into the lake. Oh, it's going to blue me. Oh, easy, easy. Oh, my tail. Gosh. Jesus Christ. Mate, calm down and I'll get you back quicker, I promise. Well, it is an absolutely beautiful spring day. Today we've got temperatures up to 15 degrees, um, super warm. There's the smell of blossom in the air, bringing that real hope and promise of uh, good times just around the corner. Oh, I do love my sunshine. Anyway, and more importantly, the main reason I've got a massive buzz on today is because I'm at Nash Church Lake and I'm here for four nights fishing. Um, I feel like I'm going on holiday. <laughs> Literally this week I've been prepping everything and um, to be honest with you, it's probably the closest thing I've had to a holiday for the last few years. So uh, yeah, you can understand why I'm a little bit excited. It's an absolutely stunning lake with some ridiculously mega carping. So I'm here with Gary Atkin. Now Gary, I've only met once in the past and I don't know much about him, but I do know that he's caught a huge amount of big carp over the years and he's been fishing for a very long time. Um, he's kind of a bit of an underground, old schooly type angler if you like. Um, but if you look through his Instagram, you can see he's caught a ridiculous amount of very impressive carp. So I'm looking forward to hearing some of his stories, seeing how he goes about his fishing. And uh, apart from that, we're gonna chew the fat have some lovely food and lap up some gorgeous weather. But for now, we've got to decide who's having which half of the lake. We thought we'd split the lake into two and then that way, you know, we can kind of prep our own spots and not be stepping on each other's toes. So uh, he's just turned up, just been uh, brought up here with the old Nash Barra, Power Barra, quad bike, <laughs> with a trailer on, which again is a bit of a luxury in itself. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go around, catch up with him and sort out some swims. <laughs> Okay, so we've had a little look about, um, we're gonna split the lake in two, but both of us are super polite about who wants to go where. Mm. So we were gonna leave it up to a coin to decide. However, none of us have got a yeah, coin. Yeah, both skin, so we've got no coins. <laughs> so, old school, shortest stick it is. Um, I'll just switch them up, I'll let you choose. And then, do you wanna choose the side of the lake or do you wanna choose, as in, should we make this the side of the lake or do you wanna choose it by winning? Um, choose it by winning. Choose it by winning. And yeah, go going on. where you want to right. go. Right. Oh, he's picked the longer one. Well, man, you, your choice. Um, okay, I'll go on the right. Yeah, I quite like the look of that side. Um, but I think, I think we're happy anywhere, mate, aren't we? I think we've got yeah. equal opportunities. Loads of uh, areas to go at. Whole lake to ourselves. Buzzing, isn't you? Yeah, yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Although the last few fish have come from the right, and the wind's blowing down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's all good, mate, innit? Like you say, little pond, loads of carp, weather's brilliant, innit? So, yeah, should be good. There you go. Fingers crossed. All right, mate, well, as I say, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day, so uh, should we crack on? Find, yeah, find, yeah find get some, some rods out and see what we're going to do. Yeah, we've got loads, to, uh, loads of time to, to chat, and uh, yeah. I'll be picking your brains about all sorts throughout the session, because cool. I've seen how many fish you've caught. <laughs> no. uh, uh. <laughs> awesome. All right, and go. Cool. Happy days. Get yourself sorted yeah, and nice catch one. up shortly. Yeah, cool. Nice one. Nice one, Joe. Oi, oi. Right, I've decided to come in this corner here. Um, we thought we'd sort of, rather than make a base camp in the middle, we'd go on either end of the lake and then sort of spread our rods out a little bit around these sort of vicinities. Um, obviously, you know, spreading the lines out should help them uh, not end up in one corner, you know, with the pressure. And obviously it gives us plenty of options as well. So yeah, I've just chucked my bivvy up right as far back as I could get it and uh, I'm going to knock up some bait. 
speaking quite quietly because I can imagine there's probably fish creeping around in these margins down here. Well, potentially with this warm breeze blowing in here and the sunshine hitting it. Um, so yeah, I've got plenty of bait with me. Kind of brought a bit of everything like you would if you were going on a sort of French holiday trip, you know, just in case. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it in all that malarkey. Um, but yeah, I've got some maggots and worms and casters and pinkies and um, plenty of cell pre-soaked in the old uh, smart liquid. Got some hemp and I'm going to knock myself a nice mix up with those bits and pieces. Um, Willy Worms were kind enough to look after me for this trip. So yeah, I've got a few uh, little bits for that they do that look quite interesting. There's some liquid worm. Um, and yeah, like I say, a few uh, lobs, dendrobenas and casters, etc. So yeah, I'm gonna knock up a nice little mix. There's a little spot which Tom showed me in the corner under a bush, which looks uh, like a prime little area to be primed up and uh, we'll drop a rig in there once, once they get in there, if they get in there. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to have a little flicker around with a little lead, try and locate some spots to present my baits on. And uh, yeah, I'm not in any rush. Normally I'm a bit more of an opportunist type angler, but we've got four nights ahead of us. Um, yeah, I think normally I'll be like, oh, I'll get a single out there and this out there, and blah, blah, blah. But no, I'm going to take my time and uh, do everything properly. So. Um, suitably happy for this evening's fishing. Um, but apparently a lot of it in here is daytime, which is always nice from a filming point of view. But, yeah, we'll see what happens, but whatever happens, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. I could probably have my top off right now and my shorts on. And uh, you know, it's the beginning of March, so thank you very much, love it. Right, let's get some bait knocked up and some rods in the pond. <laughs> Sorted, proper naughty little mix that one. Um, like I said before, you know, maggots, pinkies, chopworm, caster, hemp, little bit of sweet corn. Oh, look at that. Oozing goodness. Fit for a king, that. A uh, king of carp. Don't have a king of a, a human would like to eat this stuff. <laughs> Rather them than me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get this spot behind me prepped up first. Then uh, get me leading rod out, try and find a couple of nice clean areas. I'm gonna try and fish sort of fairly close in if I can to uh, avoid having lines going out into the pond too far. Then obviously we can work over the next couple of days on that if, uh, if it's not happening, push out a bit further. Oh yeah, that is a naughty looking spot. Mad, it's almost like there's just a bomb hole down there. All shallow and silkweed around the edges. It literally just drops off into a deep hole. Doesn't look particularly clear. So maybe they haven't really been getting in here yet this year, but I reckon with this warm weather, can't be long, surely. Plenty, two handfuls, that's all it needs. Bloody hell. Go on the karate kid. What's that? Well, I thought, seeing as this is the first warm day of the year, um, and they've got a warm wind blowing down here and the sun shining on it. I thought if I start leading around, then if they're only just starting creeping in here, I'm just going to spook them straight out. So I thought I'd hang back a little bit, um, have a good look in the next hour or so, and yeah, observe rather than just going in there and spooking them out of the area, if they're here already, that is. But, um, yeah, it certainly feels like an area they could be. It's so warm, it's a joke. Well, Gary, cracking place, mate. Yeah, it's beautiful, mate. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah, what a mega place.
long old drive for you. Yeah, three and a half hours, mate. Um, yeah, it beats plastering though, doesn't it? It's, uh, yeah, I'd rather be driving on the motorway and going fishing than uh, trailing up ceiling. So yeah, happy days, couple of days off work. This weather's perfect, so yeah, all good, mate, all good. Some lovely fish to go for. Yeah, I've just been having a look at the pictures on the board in there and there's some real stunning carp, big, you know, real big carp as well. So fingers crossed, mate, we might catch one or two. We'll see, yeah. Weather, weather couldn't be any better, could it? With, Timing wise, I think it's, um, yeah, could be spot on. Could have got it right. Feels like we're on holiday, doesn't it? It does, mate. It feels, feels like it's 20 degrees, doesn't it? Sun in your face will be, yeah, your face will be red by the end of today, I reckon. Not seeing any fish yet, but just literally just, yeah, well, we know sort of this middle area there's, there's been fish about. So just chuck some singles out for now. Just go lightly and, yeah, see what happens. Probably spod the granny out of it, out of it tonight when it gets dark, mate. <laughs> Loads of big fish, isn't it? So obviously, yeah, they could be up for a bit of a feed, couldn't they, at some point, so... Definitely. Yeah, just go li lightly for now, mate, singles, and then, like I say, probably put a bit of bait in and fish, fish a rod over a bit of bait for tomorrow. See what happens. Awesome. Right, I'm going to go and find some spots and get a couple of rods out myself. Lovely. Buzzing. Yeah, and me, mate, absolutely. What a place. Well, thankfully, without too much bother or too much disturbance, I was able to find a few really nice little spots along this bank. Um, none of them too far out. The furthest one's five wraps, which is this one. Um, just really nice, clean little polished off dinner plates, you know, sort of brrr, little bit of gravel. Um, one of them's a smooth area actually, but yeah, two of them are gravel and one a nice clean smooth area, um, which goes down with a donk as well. So yeah, well happy with them three spots. Um, good old Joey Morgan special, little solid bag, and for the maggots bit of a mainline ground bait and then a load of smart liquid in the ground bait as well. That's going to go out with uh, probably half a spoon full of mix. I need to get it out soon actually because the trouble with these maggots is they sort of uh, the, the PVA reacts to them and it softens right up so let's get that out of there now. What's happening in the morning here? Morning. How are we doing? Yeah, I've had a bit more sleep than you by the looks of it. Mm. What, yeah. What happened? Just a mental night. It's like fishing at SeaWorld Centre, mate. It was, yeah, ridiculous. I've not, I think I must have slept for 20 minutes. I've just been listening to carp rolling all night and I've not, I've had a one liner. That's, that's been it. That's literally been it. But, really? Yeah. It's been crazy, mate. But this end of the lake, like, well, off the back of this island and that where I've been fishing, like, ended up moving my rods around one then two and yeah no sleep listening to cart rolling all night even behind me just yeah just crazy but it sounds exciting yeah it has been mate i've had no sleep my eyes are burning and yeah it's one of them there's me i've slept through it all yeah but this well this morning mate i'm sure we should have some activity shouldn't we i don't think it's done a bite in the night has it for a, quite a while so i think we're just waiting for this morning mate won't we i bet some of them sounded massive didn't they ridiculous mate 15 yards out you've got 40 pounders just <laughs> rolling it just mate, honestly i've never yeah 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 it's a bit new to me listening to this yeah that kind of thing going off at bloody four o'clock in the morning while you just stood there watching like so you tried to like moving rods and that did you i've got yeah i've moved rods up right where the fish are. i've literally flicked them on top of where they've showed me and i've had a couple of liners and that has that's been it so far but fingers crossed it's uh i think 
mid-morning dinner time, hopefully. Yeah, time. well, the guys, they sort of said that most of the bites were daytime, didn't they? So Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think most sort of dinner time, afternoon, more, yeah, yeah any time one. in the daylight. But I th you'd have expected one last night. I'd, every time I sat on my bed, a fish went over, you know, within the area where I'm fishing. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Well, we've got another day of lovely weather ahead, mate. So yeah, um, yeah. Fingers it's crossed. It's going to happen. It's going to happen today, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm sure one of us will. Yeah, do a sort of down in front of you. Want the yesterday evening? I'm sure they'll be back. What we've seen this morning has been mainly that way, but yeah, I'm sure it. Uh, we'll both be in with shot today. Lovely. Yeah. Fingers right. crossed. Get the old kettle on. Eh? Yeah. Have another brew, mate. Sometimes. <laughs> Bit awkward this one. <laughs> it's quite shallow in this corner. There's a uh, aerator as well. There's a couple of nice looking clear spots just off of it as it goes. Imagine like once it does warm up, they're definitely going to be getting in here. Obviously, the, um, the shallower areas, the natural food tends to kick off a bit earlier in the year. And uh, obviously, the fish react to that. I think also, obviously, because them sort of areas warm up, probably just a little bit more comfortable. I see a bit of a light strip off the island from here as well actually. Can't see any carp there. I think with this cold easterly blowing down here, probably quite unlikely to see any. <laughs> but that's a nice little spot off that area. So I'd definitely be putting a scoop of bait on that with the bushwhacker. Keep an eye on it. I think you'd know they'd been in here because it would be, uh, be coloured, you know, the spots you can see are obviously clay. So it wouldn't take much to get a little bit of colour in the water, I'm sure. Hmm. Where are you? Not here. about pulling it back into them reeds, man. They don't want to come in. Right, the way it keeps rolling over like that. Mega. Days. Hey. Well done, mate. Nice one. Top result. <sighs> oh, sorry, mate. That's all right. <laughs> I'll take that. Bang on the head. That's a big fish, isn't it? I'm gonna cut wide. <laughs> oh yeah. He yeah, is big, isn't he? Yeah. And head on it. Big fish that is. Is it a big one? <laughs> what else can it be? Is it big enough to be the big one? It's wide, its head's wide, isn't it? It's long as well, isn't it? Just what's that hook in the net, mate? It looks like the big one to me, Gary. Yeah, well. Oh. I don't really know the fish that well, but that to me looks like. I'm thinking it is, mate. The big, it's... long one that's, yeah, been in here a long time. Mugged me off four times on a sinking worm. Is that the one? Years ago. 
Is it? Split, the peck, yeah. split left peck. I don't, I've not even looked that much, but yeah. Well, there we go. We're pretty certain that's the one. Which means Gary has got the big common. <laughs> awesome. Well, when the winds in the east, the fish bite the least. I don't mm. think so. <laughs> not today, mate, eh? Hey, not today. <laughs> To be fair, it's a bit more southerly than easterly now. <laughs> Can we have a... It's around 51. Is it's it? It's definitely over 50 pounds. Oh yeah. man, now what a result, Gary. <laughs> yeah, it look, it's certainly over 51. Yeah, we'll wait it proper if you get... Yeah. When you're done with that camera, yeah. we can... Uh... All right, I'll put this down. Yeah, 51 bang on, mate. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Mega, well done. Mint. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's the way we like it. <sighs> Look at that. Mega carp. Got to be pleased with that, mate, you know? Yeah. Nice fish, mate, big fish. It's odd looking, isn't it? It's so long and... So earlier on, I, uh, I could hear some magpies and I said, right, there's more than one magpie there because we kept seeing multiple ones. I looked over in this tree and we counted up to six. And I said, well, blimey, six for gold. That means you're going to catch, one of us is going to catch the big one. And, uh, Look at that, a couple of hours later, there it is. Well, it's up in the morning to you. Another nice, bright, sunny morning. Unfortunately, it was another very quiet night. Um, yesterday after Gary had that mega, mega fish, what a result, unbelievable. Um, yeah, we just sort of chilled out. Gary had a few beers celebrating. I had a few cups of tea to celebrate with him. And uh, yeah, his missus cooked us an absolutely amazing chili, which went down a treat. Um, but yeah, I think I've got to up my game a little bit. There hasn't been much activity over this side um, since that first day. I noticed there was a few over here on the drone when we were getting some shots. But apart from that, oh, and then that first evening, there was a few fish showing out in, in this vicinity. I've had two bags out there since, and uh, yeah, not a sniff on them. So obviously I've got other water that I can try. Um, down the other end of this bank, sort of fishing around the back of the island, out in the centre or this side of the centre. There's a bit of water there to try. So yeah, there's other things I can do. I mean, maybe they're not really up for, you know, that much of a munch. Um, and as I said to you, you know, I've found really nice little clear spots and maybe they're just too blatant. Um, I mean, obviously they're big carp. They've had a lot of boilies in their life. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'm better off going down the boily route than rather than sort of the natural route. I mean, I imagine, you know, throughout the winter, carp are probably mostly eating naturals. Um, so they're probably a bit sick of them. Probably just want something with a bit more substance to it. So, yeah, I think I'm going to maybe try a couple on bottom baits with just sort of half a dozen baits around them and then a couple on uh, single pop-ups and try a couple of different spots. But apart from that, I could do a couple of signs so they can let me know what I should be doing, you know? Let the fish tell you what to do. 
Right, as you can see, I'm still a little bit bleary-eyed, so another coffee is mucho needed. Yeah, Gary didn't have anything last night either. Um, it was a completely different night, you know. I set my alarm for three o'clock to get up and have a listen, but it was just absolutely tipping it down and quite windy as well. So considering I'd only had about three hours sleep, I was just like, no, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, as I said, lovely morning. Um, kettle's going on now, and then we have a little rethink and uh, change the plan. that got myself a uh, little cafetiere again can't beat the old fresh coffee on the bank can you that old uh, instant stuff just don't quite cut the mustard as they say well it's been a quiet old morning nothing to report um seen one show over between the island and the bank behind uh the second island sorry even gary's water and i put the drone up earlier just to kind of get some shots um, obviously, you know, the temptation is always there to have a little look and see if you can see any fish. Um, try not to do it too much because oh, it kind of feels like cheating a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> but we did see a few swimming about. Um, not loads, but there was a few over the back more than anything, um, sort of yeah, behind that island and this island. So I put a couple of rods over there just because it's sort of an area that I hadn't really fished yet as well, so I was going to stick a couple of rods there anyway. Um, but yeah, nothing to report yet. I'm just sort of in that situation of like, don't know really what else to try. Um, they're obviously not doing a great deal of feeding, so I don't think it's worth putting bait out. I think it's probably more of a case of finding a spot they want to feed in, or, you know, just not being so blatant with the spots and just fishing uh, you know, on top of the silkweed if you like. I'm also thinking you know, it doesn't really do night bites for some reason or night bites are very rare but a lot of the time these days a lot of people use pop-ups and bright pop-ups and uh, even maggots. I've not even caught loads of fish in maggots after dark before so I'm thinking tonight I might put three rods on bottom baits maybe just a little stringer few around them but I think that can definitely make a difference sometimes you know um, these days it's very rare people use bottom baits but obviously they're eating them all the time and in a lake like this these fish have been you know they've sort of grown up with boilies um, so yeah it's almost like a, a natural food to them in some ways so yeah I think we might go down that route lighten down the old hook links smaller hooks um, yeah, just sort of find things down a little bit. It might not be to make the difference. I might end up just, you know, going back to what I was doing and the lake might just switch on, you know. Um, it's quite often the way, talking about it with Gary earlier, you know, he's said he's done it in the past. You end up scratching around, trying different things and then uh, ultimately, you know, the lake switches on and you end up back doing what you've always done, what you've got your most amount of confidence in. But I do like to mess about. Um, a, I think, you know, it keeps it more interesting and B, if you do have a result doing something completely different, then uh, it's a hell of a lot more satisfying. Right, I'm going to drink the rest of this coffee. Go and have another little mooch about. I might have to move my bivvy tonight a bit further up there because I can see me sort of concentrating on that area more than this, just because I haven't really seen anything here since the first night. All right. Carry on, keep the faith and all that. It only takes a minute to get a bite. <laughs> well, that was nice. Nice uh, bacon butty, care of Fink Food. Good old Scott, I was speaking to him the other day um, about doing a bit of filming on the show. And he said, 
oh, you're going down to church lake, are you? A little holiday? I'll tell you what, I'll send you a little care package. Um, so yeah, he sent me a little selection of bits and pieces to try. We've got some fajitas, some pizzas, bacon rolls this morning, which were blooming lovely. Um, some burgers. Yeah, it's going to be a job to get for it all, to be honest with you. And some of them naughty looking waffles. Oh, a bleep. A rarity. <laughs> Come on the cup. Right then, Gary, so I haven't really got around to a proper chat and introducing you, really, have we? No, no. <laughs> No, we've been here a couple of been days. Too busy we? trying to catch fish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guest here at times, do not it? You're like, right, what do I need to do? You know, especially when they're not really giving themselves away that much. It sort of mm. leaves it as a bit of a guessing game, doesn't it? it certainly does, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, obviously, you've been fishing a hell of a long time. How many years exactly? I don't know, mate. Since a little, little boy, who uh, all my family, my dad, my granddad, and all the friends, you know, we all just, yeah, I just used to go fishing as a little boy before I could even hold a rod, you know, real fishing myself sort of thing. But probably caught, I can't, I'll be honest, I can't remember when I caught my first carp. I um, can't remember the year. I think I'd have been like eight or nine. Um, you remember the carp though? Vaguely, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. Um, but it was accidental, we just float fishing sweet corn. Um, and I fish, we started fishing like progressively. Sort of fishing on the back brooks, the streams, catching, turning rocks over and catching stone loads and bullheads, you know, um, and the odd crayfish. And then we sort of went up into the deeper water and seen, you know, you'd see little chub and dace and roach and, you know, and we had, we caught them and the minnows and as you do, you know, and then progressively sort of started float fishing on the, the local lake and on the, down on the Derwent and, yeah. But my first carp, and it was float fishing for tech, like float fishing sweet corn. I'd be, I don't know, I'd say eight or nine. Um, float fishing for corn under a willow tree. Caught a couple of tents that morning, we used to go down really early, like Mr. you know, Grandad used to take me down on my dad and caught, caught a, a couple of tents and then I hooked something and it literally just beast, you know, it's like an eight pound common, you know, but it was, you know, that was like the first, you know, it was like, wow, yeah, 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 you catching two pound tents and they, they pull your arm off, you know, and then you hook that and it was like, whoa, just, I can't remember what tackle would be using, but it was just like, hold on, you know, and it was like, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Mega. Um, and I mean, uh, it'd be nice to talk about a lot of the lakes you fish, but you fish so many, I don't think we'd have enough time. We need a, like a three hour podcast for that. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm going to pick a couple out of out of the bag. Um, one, I know you've done particularly well on Dinton. What was that, sort of five, six years ago now? 2015 and 2000, yeah, I fished it for a couple of seasons, yeah. Um, so what I'd like to know is, I've not really spoke to many people who have fished Dinton, but what makes it so hard? Because it's got a reputation of being you know, one of the hardest waters in the country, hasn't it? For the stock and the size of it. I couldn't, I don't, I couldn't give you an answer to that, mate, because there's loads of carp. There is, you know, it's not a big lake. Um, White Swan, I did a little bit on Black, only fished Black Swan a few times. Um, that's got a hell of a lot. There's, I think there's hundreds and hundreds, you know. Um, obviously a lot easier water. Um, but White Swan, they're just... They're just rare. They're just there's there's some that get you know they get caught two three times a year or whatever. But then there's some that just they get caught once every six years or seven years or not in ten years. You know, it's just it's just a mental place. Um, I find that so intriguing, especially yeah. you know when you've got such a you know, high caliber of anglers. Uh, yeah. Fishing. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of it's obviously it's a big circuit water, isn't it? You know, there's a lot of people. For, you know, it's a busy busy place. Um, so all your fishing over the years has always been kind of weekend based, hasn't it? Obviously, pretty much, mate. I've worked all, yeah, there, I've worked it? all my life, mate. Um, yeah, obviously self-employed, so you can you can pinch a bit of time. You have, yeah, when I fished Dinton, I tried to sort of have a Monday off or get the Friday, you know, get the Friday off and get down on late on a Thursday or Friday, you know, just to. But most of the time, yeah, my fishing is sort of Friday, Saturday, or one night a week a lot of the time. Um, but not all, you know. Sometimes springtime, you know what it's like. We all. We all push the boundaries a bit, don't we? Yeah. I think, mean, as carp anglers, we are generally pretty selfish, aren't we? So we do, <laughs> we do try and fit. You know, it's it's one of them, isn't it? When yeah, well, I mean, you obviously travel a long way as well, so you you, you clearly put a, a hell of a lot of effort into your fishing. You know, with the, the miles and um, the baiting up and, and everything else. It's, yeah, uh, it's, it takes a lot of dedication, doesn't it? You've got to want to catch the fish, aren't you? To be dry, you know, you've got to want to be out there doing it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I've. I've yeah, for quite a few number of years now, I've been sort of travelling. I've only lost the uh, 
Net the landing took the uh, camera out there. Mm. So yeah, it should be all right. I'm yeah, it might be worth moving down. it, mate. <laughs> Don't want it knocking that over. It's quite that easterly. It's pretty cold, isn't it? Sat here. It's a. Uh, yeah, every time it spins round and you get that just yeah, you biting can, edge, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I feel it, it on the back of my ears. Um, okay, so going back to Dinton then, uh, weekends, obviously, notoriously hard lake anyway, but the weekends is always busier, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so, you know, the fish, obviously, when they're under that much pressure, it puts them on that much more of an edge, doesn't it? So yeah. You, you know, from what I can gather, your results were... <laughs> particularly good, you know, you caught a lot more than most people. Or, I did all right, or, man. Or everyone. <laughs> For the nights, the amount of nights that you've done especially. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like to know is, what, you know, what do you think it was that sort of gave you the edge? What, why do you think you caught more? I know that's a hard thing to say. No, I didn't, I didn't catch a lot of the bit, mate. I, the first year I caught a couple of the bit, like a couple of 40 pounders or whatever. I didn't catch a lot consistent. of the bit. Consistent? I was consistent. I caught and, you know, I, I did all right. I caught fish, you know. Um, but yeah, um, it's a number of lots of things in it. You've got to be, you know, you turning up in the night and making, you know, just making sure you're on them and quality, quality bait. Everything you're using has got to be, you know, if you're competing with a number of anglers and they're all using quality bait, you've got to make sure yours is as good or if not better than everybody else's, aren't you? You know, um, you got to be that. Uh, the Miller mix mainly, uh, Nash's Miller mix, um, and bits and bobs, not always boil, you know, hemp and bits, you know, maize and just bits and bobs, you know, like, as we do. Um, but yeah. Uh, I know one thing you mentioned that we've been talking about, and it's something that, you know, you've mentioned on a couple of different venues, uh, so it's obviously something that applies to your fishing a fair bit, and that was kind of fishing in the silt with, you know, shorter rigs, and yeah. what was your thinking behind that? Just initial sort of introduction to Dinton and turning up at, I went for a guest the year before. Um, I had a guest in August, Simon let me have a couple of nights guest. Uh, and I turned up in the morning, first thing in the morning, obviously as keen as out, you know, drove down there and there was areas on the lake, the people fishing and they've got fish sheeting up on them and fish roll and it's like, wow, this is, you know, this is mega. And the guy I'm looking, I walked in his swimming, he's landing there, it's dry. His rods are point, you know, slack down, and he's, you can see he's fishing, and it's like a jacuzzi. I'm stood behind his bivvy, I'm like, one's flopped over, and it's like, wow. It's not, the day I've walked past a few hours later, as of, you know, whatever bite, you know, the morning's sort of gone, and spoke to him, and he's like, he's not had anything all weekend. It's like, well, the vet, you bait, you know, <laughs> and just, just clock that basically, you know, springtime pop ups. And think yeah, that's look like what you'd go to, isn't it? You know, chards and spinner rigs or whatever, bright pop-ups and things like that. But I just think I don't know. The fish are obviously deep in the silt. Um, the up to the gills, digging in that silt, all that bait. And if you've got a pop-up waf wafting around near its pecs or whatever, you you know. So I just and you've seen them doing that as well, haven't you? you yeah, know, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen that. Silt. Yeah, I've seen I've what seen that numerous times, mate, on certain waters and that. But see, I think it, you know, it's, it's, I said to you tonight, it was something I used to do back in, when I worked at Dream Lakes, and again, you know, hev really heavily pressured lakes, and I'd find the silty depressions and, and fish like a four inch hook link, yeah. um, a four ounce lead and a little bag and like you say it just kind of pull, pulls it into the actual silt itself and then when them fish are rooting around in that silt like they naturally would be for their natural food it's very hard for them to pick yeah, out roots and deal with it. Yeah they can't deal with it can because they're rooting and you've yeah. got such a short hook which is what yeah. you do isn't yeah. it. Um, it only takes a little bit of movement and bang they're nailed and so I think it's a, a really good way of Tricking, you know, particularly uh, yeah. tricky fish, if you like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, mate. Definitely, yeah. Um, like I say, you've only got to imagine just the function of a pop-up rig amongst that scenario, you know, that you've got on feeding, and you could you can just see why they're getting away with it, can't you? But yeah, I think the first sort of the guest session I went, I ended up I did two nights and I caught on both nights um, fishing like that and fishing the way I like to fish, sort of curved shank hooks with a blowback and a, a bottom bait straight in the and I was like, well. You know, that's it's nice. My ticket come up the next year. I sort of knew I could just stick to how I like to fish, and it would be okay for the venue. But yeah, it's a lot, a big learning curve on somewhere like that because, you, like you say, it's just the pe you know the amount of people that are, you know you'd walk around in the night. You'd set your alarm to go and have a mooch around at midnight, and you you'd be walking past people that are, other anglers that are like that. You know, they're on it like looking for fish is the same. So you got yeah you you know you've got to be 
you've got to be keen, haven't you, to fish somewhere like that and sort of catch a few. And, yeah, definitely. I mean, you, 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 you're clearly you know, always on the ball. Um, myself, I've sort of been a bit lazy the last couple of nights. When I'm up all, all day and you know, by the time it gets to midnight, I tend to start later than I should and then I drift off and I'm getting up in the middle of the, you know, like two, mm. three in the morning or whatever. It's hard well, to I, do, yeah, it? Well, I you're, just, you're on it, isn't you? I just don't sleep when I fish. I struggle <laughs> to sleep. It's not, it's not half the time, it's not because I want to. I'd have, like, you know, last night I just wanted to go to sleep, you know, I want, but I want, you know, just wanted a good night's kit, but four o'clock come, I think I heard a fish, I'm like, my shoes are on, I'm out, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's not particularly wanting to do it, it's just, yeah, it's just sort of, I don't know, it's like a, a drug to me, it's just adrenaline, you know, just buzzing to, to come and being, it's not very often you fish somewhere, such a stock of fish, is it? You no. know, and you, when you're hearing them and seeing them, it's like, whoa, that was a, you know, Yeah, I've gotten that the was a out that first night, because there's yeah, nothing more went, exciting than yeah. hearing a proper show, and when you've got, you know, a fish of an average size of 34 pounds, and, yeah. and many 40s, was it 14 40s? Something there, like that, you right? said, didn't they? At least a dozen. And yeah. a couple of 50s, potentially, like, yeah. that's just insane, isn't it, for this size of eight? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was like seaweed, honestly, that first night, I was just like, I was walking, you know, walk, recasting in the middle, like, well, I need to put a rod to that, and it's just like, whoa, but, and then by the morning, your eyes are hanging out, aren't they? You burnt, you're like, oh, Jesus. And then obviously the day went on and you caught that monster common, so uh, the buzz was refueled, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you were wired, weren't you? Couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's good, yeah, yeah, nice. Awesome. Yeah, couldn't have asked for a better cart, really, could we? I don't think. No, no. Okay, so you're obviously not a one trick pony. Um, you know, plenty of tricks in your hat, isn't there? So, um, zigs is something I know you use quite a lot in your fishing. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like to use zigs, mate. Any particular fencing. little, you know, things that you've learned through zig fishing that you could pass on? What, what, what tend, do you tend to use as hook baits? Um, what sort of depths? Do, is there any average depth, that, as in, you know, within the percentage of the, the water column, like two thirds mm, or anything? Mate, it's all relative to where you are and you know what the fish are doing in it it's mm. um yeah no i'd sort of i traveled down to oxford a lot and them clear weedy you know full of canadia and gin clear water then i mean i fished lynn chill back in back early 2000s and when before that even when it was a day ticket and those fish used to live near the surface you know i remember catching them on a foot under the surface on a bit of black foam in january and it's just like and it just changes you know if you'd fish around sort of the northern places that we'd fished as kids growing up with the estate lakes and stuff like that. you wouldn't you know you wouldn't fish a zig under the surface at, you know we're a black bit of foam would you it never, yeah. you know it's yeah it's one of those isn't it um so if, night time day time any time <laughs> mate any time isn't it they're, you know now they just want the warmth don't they so that's all the, that's all they want is the warmth really isn't it so yeah up in the layers i suppose good starting points always two foot down isn't it you know when it's as long as it's not really windy obviously then you you'd probably go another couple of foot down, wouldn't you? But yeah. Yeah, it's all relative to... It's a shame we can't use them on here, isn't it? Because uh, I think that probably it would is, have yeah, it would have been extra opportunity. Yeah, yeah possibly. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure it would, yeah. But, yeah. Never mind, we have to stick to the rules. That's it, mate. Yeah, you've got to... Uh, yeah. yeah, the rules are there for a reason, aren't they? Definitely. And another thing I know, you know, I've seen that you seem to be quite successful with is floater fishing. We've had a couple of particularly good sessions doing that, you? Yeah, well, you've I've mentioned been. about three just since we've been here, so. Yeah, I do like my float, I think it's exciting, isn't it? It's mega, isn't it? There's no better way to catch them, is it? Especially if it's a, you know, a big one, and it's, yeah, it's, it's good, isn't it? I mean, like, yeah, well, how big is that one you had last year, that big linear? Like 49. 49. Yeah, 49, That's yeah. an incredible fish, isn't it? Big apple size yeah, scales. Yeah, caught. I mean, <laughs> you were actually sort of pulling it out of the way of other fish, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, it, it was an horrendous day fishing, really, because, I think I got it feeding first thing in the morning. I, there was it in the surface, on, you know, it's clear water, really warm. They were up on the surface at first light. So before it was getting light, I was putting a load of mixers out in the middle where I'd expect them to be. And then that morning, they sort of drifted in, gentle breeze, it was perfect for them. They drifted into this corner and I'd spent oh, all morning, like four or five hours. By dinner time, it was 28 degrees. I'm sweating, my face is burnt, I'm bright red. Frustrated, you know what it's like, it's frustrating, isn't it? When it doesn't go your way, you know, and that fish was the biggest, clumsiest it had come up it had taken me I foul I told you didn't I, I foul looked it like two weeks before it took me bubble float and as it's gone down with it my hooks run across its back and it's literally bolt I've had to open my bail arm and it just come straight off but that's how clumsy it was it had come 
you know, it'd be a five foot up link, it'd be, it'd see the bulk bait and it'd ignore it and go for the bubble flow. So <laughs> using like half a slice of bread to try, you know, but it'd, it'd always miss it. Oh, it's, it's a horror, yeah, it was a bizarre one. But I did my, I had just, and that morning, I'd say, got into dinner time and I got them feed. The window of opportunity was so, you know, it was just one of those days, because it, it had been feeding from early in the morning, it was, it was a good day for it, you know? Um, but it took me hours. And when I've had to lengthen my uplink, so it was like eight foot long, so it didn't see my bubble float, you know? It was just all, it was, it was just a hook bait, so it could home in on it, but yeah. <laughs> it must have missed my hook bait that morning probably 20 times. Wow. Like come up to take it and just like run down the side of its face or push it out the way and it'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Wow. But yeah, it, uh, it, it went all right in the end. So, um, photo fishing then, anything different you do? Or, I mean, what about? Like the size of your bait, so you just use one size of dog biscuit, or do you tend to go down to the smaller ones as well? Or? No, I, I've got some pop ups that I made, some like dumbbell, really buoyant, brown, fishy, but and they're just the mega, they're just band on, and they're, they're also they're real good. I haven't, I've only got a few left now, but but for yeah. freebies, just your mixers, you know, standard the rise in there, yeah, and riser pellets and standard mixers, yeah, nothing different, all just perseverance, just that's the main key, isn't it? for Floater fishing is just keep at it and keep until you know the more effort you put in, the, the more chance you're gonna, you know, it's gonna reward you and you're gonna catch one. It's um, I've heard good things about the riser pellets, they're not, I've, I've had some like last year, I, I got sent some and uh, didn't really get a chance to do much float fishing last season, but I've heard they can be really good for pulling the fish up to the surface if they're yeah. you know, kind of grabbing their attention if they're not straight up on the float, yeah, on the top. yeah. Well, that's that morning when I caught that one out of there. I knew where they were, they were showing in the night time, they were under, like a, a long way out in the middle of this pond and I just spawned a load of their mixers and it brought the fir first light, they were taking out on the surf, you know, like f half past four in the morning, they were out there in the middle of the pond and they slowly came my way so I could fish for them, because obviously you ain't, you ain't casting a controller 130 yards, are you? But yeah, and it's too, obviously too deep for zigs, but yeah, they are good, they are effective, yeah. But yeah, any, you know, dog biscuits are dog biscuits, aren't they really, once you get them going on them. Another session you mentioned on the surface was, uh, was it Christchurch? Mm, I've, had, I've, I've had some, it's a brilliant place to float a fish, Christchurch. Yeah? Yeah, it always was, yeah. Yeah, in mega. the old days when the petals in the petals Yeah, in the... that used to like a floater, didn't it? Yeah, there was, yeah. Yeah, it's just a brilliant float. They just, like I said, they, you Go on then, you tell us that one, because that was a red letter session. <laughs> yeah, um... What happened that day? No, um... Pfft, I'm going back to when it went day ticket again the first year, was it two? The second year, it had been day ticket, then it closed for syndicate. It was like 2013, 14, possibly. Um, just chanced my arm, I thought I'd have a trip. Not been for many years, I'll go and have a trip. And it wasn't as it wasn't as busy as you'd expect. You know, I don't know how many swims there's on Christchurch, 20, 22, something like that. And sometimes, you know, them 22 swims could be gone. You could turn up and you couldn't even get a swim, but it was probably half full. It was probably 10, 12 on. And quite the pressured fish, they're just so, so pressured. and. You know, if there's 18 people on that lake, if there's two swims and no lines in, that's where the fish, you do, as soon as you walk on there, if there's, you know, a swim that's free, there'll be fish there, that's what, you know, the and it's just, you, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, that's just, you know, it's, it's, it's how it is, isn't it, with these pressured carp, and you could literally just rock up and fling us, even single, you didn't even have to get them feeding on Christchurch, they'd, you know, they'd happily take, because somebody else has probably chucked some in an hour earlier, and they've had, you know, because it's that busy, um, <laughs> and you catch them in the dark, I've caught them in the dark, like, striking at slurps and just holding your rod and like any, you know, fishing with braided mainline with a light and just feeling from, you know, and yeah, yeah really. I caught a few like that on there. But yeah, that particular day that I'd mentioned, um, I can't remember, I'd caught one off the bottom in the morning. I'd done the night in the middle of the lake. I'd had a 31, real nice fish um, for off, the, off the deck. And then there was fish cruising about, it's, I think it was May, uh, end of May. Brilliant time to be out fishing, obviously. Um, and they were up on the surface. First things, I mean, it's, I, there's a linear in there. It's a 40 pounder now. I don't know. They call it George's. It's mega. It's like a proper zip. It's just, it's an alter. It's a wicked car. Little, it's got like four little scales on each side off its off its lateral line. It just look, it's just mega. Always bright. Anyway, I caught. It swam across in front of me on its own about 40 yards. I just cast in front of it and it, I caught it. Like 30, <laughs> just under 35 pounds. Like, and then I went, yeah, I went. I think oh, did I can. That I ended up. There's a. A fish called single scale or big scale. I think it's mid 40s now. I caught that. I had that at 38. I had the, there's a toe jam common, 41. I had them both in the net at the same time. Um, I, had, I had seven fish that day, one off the bottom and six off the top. 
Yeah, not very often that happens, is it? Don't right. get it wrong. I've tried many times after, and you, you could work all day, you know, to to get to get a chance and to catch one. But yeah, that was just one of those days. Yeah, with the average stamp of fishing, I bet quite a few of them were big ones as well. Yeah, I think four. I think there was th three twenties, and the other four. So there was a forty, and the other three were thirties, like. Yeah. That's, uh, awesome. Yeah, mega. Yeah. Yeah. Get many trips like that. No, proper well, red light day. Uh, no, well I don't. No, but <laughs> who does? You know, it's just one of them days that just yeah, it was mega. And I'd lost, I'd lost one of the big commons as well. Uh, one of the forties, either it was one of the big, boxy shaped ones, big chunky one. I got it right to the net. It was a done deal. Took my shoes and socks off and rolled my trousers up and it snagged me up on something in peg one. And that was that would have been the second one of the morning. So if I'd have landed that and all, that would you know. I bet you wish you weren't worried about your socks and well, trousers, did you? Yeah, I didn't think there was a snag there. Apparently there's some, the divers tried to take it out, apparently. They'd, they'd got, yeah, they had problems with it, but there's something, it was just in the middle of the swim. And it was up and down on the shelf and it was there. It was like, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's in the net sort of thing. And it just had a little run and it just locked up. I was like, yeah, nightmare. But oh, yeah. it did, and a couple of hours later, it was, it was forgotten about, innit? When you've caught another, you know, you've had another couple more or whatever, but yeah. A little yeah. bit painful. Yeah, at the time, but like, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, you know, from, from our talking, it's, it's clear that you like a bit of uh, guesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have been. Hardcore type of angling, that, isn't it? You know, when you're, you're sort of somewhere you shouldn't yeah. necessarily be and you can only fish at night and you've, you know, you've got to walk for miles or whatever. And so, you know, it takes a hell of a lot of dedication, that kind of fishing, doesn't it? There's not many people who uh, put themselves through that. No, I'm getting a bit old for it, I'll be honest, Joe. I'm getting a bit to that stage now where I was, no, I'm not, I'm not. I've still got <laughs> a few more, it, I've got a few more years <laughs> left in me yet, mate. But yeah, no, um, yeah, I love that. I, What's not to like? It makes you feel like a kid again, doesn't yeah. it? When you're somewhere you shouldn't be. Like I enjoy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like. It's yeah. It's mega. That adrenaline, all you know, you, the whole time. You just, yeah. It fuels you, doesn't it? It fires you. But yeah, don't get. I love to fish. You know, anywhere. If there's nice carp, I, it doesn't matter if it's busy. I like. I can mix. You know, I don't. I can mix my fishing. Not a fish busy day tickets. I'll go just, just enjoy it. Still enjoy it. So yeah. But that kind of fishing is, it takes some beating, doesn't it? When you're out hidden on your own and you catch a whacker and it's just you. And you know, and I bet, yeah, it's yeah. not something I've done at no, all. No, it's but, mega, yeah, yeah it's the is, ultimate it's, buzz. It is mega, it's mega, yeah, it's it's proper, isn't it? It's as, yeah, yeah, like you say, a lot of hard work for a lot of the time, you know, in the summer and autumn, and there ain't many hours of light, is it? When you're doing it like that, you've not the windows are very small, aren't they? So it's, yeah, you end up driving out, you know, you fish for a few hours and you're going home knackered, and it's like, oh, I can't wait to do that next week. At the time you're driving home, thinking, why have I done that? And then by the end of the day, you're like, I can't wait to get back there next week. <laughs> it's yeah, and it's all good. All right, I'd also like to know if you know how many forties you've had. Uh, I, I don't even know, mate. No, not not loads. I haven't caught loads of big fish, mate. Um, I don't know. You've had a fair few, mate, because um, you know, yeah, you, you, you mentioned enough, <laughs> and I know there's plenty more. <laughs> yeah, I've caught I've caught a few. Yeah, I've caught a few. Too modest to say. <laughs> it got three in the morning, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, mate, well, the sun is uh, starting to drop a little bit, isn't it? We've got some lovely yeah. light. I think I might put that drone up whilst we've got some nice light. and uh, Have a look, some... see if you can find some. No, no, no I need to get some nice arty shots. I'm, oh, I'm okay. done with... I, I don't want to see them on it anymore. I mentioned earlier that it's, you know, it's always a temptation to have a look when you are putting it up. Yeah. Um, but... Feel like, you know, yeah, the thing is, we're not being hard. able to we're not being able to use zigs as well. You don't want to you don't want to find a pod of fish, do you? Two foot under the surface and not, really. <laughs> not be able to fish for them. We know from you know the, the ones we have seen on there that yeah. they're spread about. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all over the place, aren't they? And, and the, like like you said, you know, it's more of a case of just whenever that window is that they feel like yeah. they're, they're going to drop down and have a little. Yeah, we, a little we know we're in the right areas, aren't we? We know we're, you know, it's just. Like you say, just that little window when they do decide to have a, a mouthful, it's, uh, yeah, it's been here, isn't it? Cool. Right, well, I want to go and get a couple of re rods repositioned. Um, I'll leave it another hour yet because it still feels like it's Yeah, fine, I fine. think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to move one. I'm happy with the rest. I'm, the other two, I'm just going to, I'm going to move one to where that fish kept showing behind that island again and just, yeah, yeah go from there. Fingers crossed, there's uh, another bite to be had. Cool. All right, what do you fancy tonight for heaters? Yeah, I'm good with that, mate. Yeah. Good with that, yeah. Steak yeah, we're vet well chicken. anyway, aren't we? We're vet well anyway, if nothing else. <laughs> it's been a, yeah, steak for me. Sweet. All right, mate. Um, well, I'll catch up in a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we'll sort out some grub. Cool. Top Happy man. days. Nice one, Joe.
Well, hello and good morning to you. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so I went to sleep about 11, set my alarm for quarter to four, and managed to get up on the first alarm. I think you've got to really, haven't you? Just got to snap yourself out of that deep sleep and uh, sleepy mode and just get the kettle on, get your shoes and socks on, and uh, yeah, try and be alert. It was still a little bit chilly, like there was a chilly wind. Um, like that first night it was flat calm and Gary was seeing a lot of them. But I did hear two, one over to the right of the island um, and one to the left where I've got two rods and I've had two rods the whole time I've been in. Uh, that's where they were showing that first evening. And literally, like, at first I thought, well, I'm not just going to chuck a lid on them. And then like, it was about four or five had showed there. I thought, like, okay, yeah, I'm stupid not to put a rod there. So I, I set a bag up, solid bag, and one showed just as it was ready to uh, cast out. So it gave me the perfect marker to drop into. So I know I've been bang on the money with that, those rods in that area. I'm going to blame it on the fish not feeding. That's my excuse. They're obviously not really uh, munching a lot at the moment. so. Um, and the water is obviously a little bit too wet for the time of year. Anyway, it's been a, a beautiful sunrise this morning and uh, yeah, very thankful just to uh, be here, be fishing and uh, appreciating such beautiful views. Obviously, I've been a bit lucky the last couple of sessions I've been out, so you've got to take the rough with the smooth, haven't you? Having said that, it's not over yet. Um, Still got another night. Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's just a case of sitting it out. I'm sure they're getting around the lake. I'm sure they're aware of where the bait is. You know, they're in these small environments. They know what's going on, and if they're moving about, then uh, they're going to see that bait. And whether it takes them a couple of days to get tempted to drop down, um, mm, just got to keep plugging away, really, ain't you? Try not to get your uh, get yourself down. <laughs> Try not to get too dejected. <laughs> no, I'm all good. Right, another coffee. And uh, yeah, watch the last of these lovely colours of this morning sunrise. Stunning. filming I think I was a better angler <laughs> I used to be watching the lake for signs at all times and then when you become a cameraman you're looking for things to film at all times it's like oh there's a goose fighting over there <laughs> oh <laughs> literally just a minute ago the swans were at it just caught them um, lasted about two seconds but there you go happens to the best of us mate don't put yourself down <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's literally, you know, I don't spend as much time watching the water as I used to because uh, you're always looking for something to film or see an opportunity of something be a good shot. So uh, yeah, that's my excuse why I don't catch as many now. <laughs> you know. We've got one on, mate. Doesn't feel too heavy. I'm out of breath because I've just had to run about 200 yards as fast as I could. <laughs> it ain't doing a deal, mate. Same fish by the looks of it. <laughs> that looks like another big common, doesn't it? I can't really see. No, it's a fully man. Do mate, won't it? You bugger. 
qui a poca. Oh my! Look at him. That's that one on the board in the hill, isn't it? Yeah! Happy days, mate. Let me get my head together. Home. Yeah, so this is one Alan caught in the, uh, the show they made last year, which is out on YouTube if you haven't seen that already. In the Nolly caught some cracking fish. Wow, this looks so nice in this sunlight. This is mega, isn't it? What a car. Look at its head. Wicked head on it. Wow, yeah. That is you look alright, mate? Immense car. Yeah. Incredible. What a result, mate. Mm, yeah, happy days. Yeah, I like this one, it's awesome. Bright morning, mate. Beautiful, mate, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. It's yeah, the most pleasant yeah. one we've had so far, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a pleasurable morning. Birds singing, sun shining. No fish, though, mate. No, no it, fish. Very quiet, isn't it? This much morning. activity last night? Yeah, they were active again, weren't they? They were active. Um, 20 to 3, I think. I was. Just, I went to sleep about 11, 20 to 3. It sounded like somebody dropped a washing machine in from an helicopter, mate. I just heard the biggest. Like biggest bosh, I was at my bed and it's, yeah, it's just sort of in between where we are, but yeah, and then a few, I didn't really get back to sleep after that, so I was up and there was fish pretty much all over the lake, yeah. Yeah, they're active, mate, there's a, I think there's a good chance of a bite this morning, you know, it's, uh, it was about this time yesterday morning, wasn't it, when I had that fully, so. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed, it, uh, it'd be nice to repeat that. It's been a little bit of a head banger, hasn't it? It's not been easy, mate, has it? It's been, we've tried everything we can try, haven't we? And, you know, we've been on fish and we've, you know, we've, yeah, it's been, we're a little bit early, aren't we? It's still, it's cold still, isn't it? It's, that water's still very cold. Um, Cheesies get carried away, isn't it? Yeah, when you're hearing them showing, uh, it's, it is, it's, you know, it's a small lake with a lot of fishing and I kind of expected us to get plenty of action once we got a bite, well, you know, but it hasn't, it's just not been the case, has it? We've no. tried, I mean, you've tried, couldn't have done any more, could you? Been on them and moving rods every, when, every time we've seen them and found them. And yeah, I mean, I try and, you know, at the end of each session, you kind of try and think, well, what would I have done differently? But mm. I don't know what else we could have done, really. No, I don't think there's not a lot else we could have done to, to get a bite, is there? Obviously, the zigs, you know, we can't, you can't use zigs, which would have been the obvious, this type, you know, would have been the obvious one. Um, Seems like they're just not up for feeding much, and, yeah. you know, they're obviously not too keen on dropping down on blatant clear spots either you know no no the bites that i've had have been over a bit of silt weed haven't they they've been over you know just one mouthful just a one mouthful over a bit of silt weed 
in the area where the fish have been, you know, where they've been holding up sort of thing. Um, you just think, wouldn't you, you know, putting out a, like, a little bit of mix with the sort of casters and maggots and chop worm and all that, you'd think they would have got on it after a few nights, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Such I a think, small lake. Yeah, I think another couple of weeks, you know, I feel a Another couple of weeks down the line, it'd be a different story, wouldn't it? Once April's here, it would be, it will, be, you know, I imagine there's some some mega fishing to be had on the place like this. But we baited spots first day, didn't we? All around the pond. Um, I've got spots I've checked this morning that I baited when we got here. A bit of handful of corn, handful of maggots, handful of casters, handful of emp. Just you know, nothing. But it's still there, you know. And mm. th and they look, you know, little cleared off areas in sort of five foot deep margins, it look, they look mega, you know, there's been carp swimming around them, but they just haven't fed on them, so. Uh, yeah, and you would have expected, I was thinking, I honestly thought, after seeing, you know, and putting the bet, I thought these spots would probably, you know, there'll be a bite to be had off these at some point, but they haven't been touched, so. No, that doesn't do your confidence any good, no, does it? No, no, it is what it is, mate. We've had a nice time, haven't we? We've had some nice food, and, I, cut, you know, I've caught a 50 pounder. Yeah, pound. that's it, oh, mate, you've had an epic session. You yeah, know, 51 yeah, common and a 37 yeah, fully. That fully was awesome, wasn't it? What a carp. Um, yeah, no, I'm made up, mate. I've had a lovely trip, enjoyed my time, and, yeah, it's been good. Awesome. Well, we've still got time yet, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to, you know, we've got another day to get through, haven't we? Sort of, well, the best part of the, the morning and the, the afternoon sort of thing. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Last chance to learn. Yeah, that 4x4 four four would be nice, wouldn't it? Come on, the 4x4. Four 4x4. Four. Four four. Well, I did see five magpies yesterday, so that's mm. that's silver. You know, silver prize, second biggest, got to be the 4x4, four four, isn't it? Yeah, it could be, mate, couldn't it? It could be on the cards. Sweet, all right, all right. Well, my hands are getting cold. Surprisingly chilly, actually. I think it's uh, time for me to get the kettle on. Yep. Good stuff. Coffee o'clock. Oi, oi. Pizzas on the bank. Are you sure? <laughs> Right, we're going to give these Think Food pepperoni sourdough pizzas a little bash. They come with a little bag which is to go in your toaster. So what you do, I guess, is you take the base out, which you've already got the sauce on. Lovely jubbly. Then get your cheese. Half of that because we get two in a pack. Lovely javelin. And then a little pot of pepperoni. Nice. Four. Should be five to be greedy. Go on then. Treat yourself. And just pop that in this bag. Get that in the old toaster. And slap it on a gentle heat. There we go, she's on. Like I said, you have got to be a little bit patient with these little uh, toaster pans and keep them on a real low heat, otherwise you tend to burn everything. Right then, let's give this a go. It certainly looks like it's cooked all right. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Just gave it probably, I don't know, four minutes on the underside and then flipped over for about 45 seconds, maybe 47 seconds on the top side. Um, but obviously it all depends on how hot you've got your cooker. So what I'd recommend is literally having it on the lowest heat possible and uh, you're gonna get a better result. But look at that, pizza on the bank. I'm impressed. Well, I've got to taste it first, haven't I? <laughs> I like to take the uh, roof off my mouth. That's probably good actually. I didn't have the uh, high expectations for these, but they're, they're actually really tasty. Mm. Top man. Lovely job. Cheers, Scott. Blinding idea, that. Thanks for the care package, Think Food. Skills. Mm. Better make Gary one, really, aren't I? <sighs> wow. What an absolutely stunning day. Really calm, beautiful, clear skies, and uh, a stunning lake. <laughs> Unfortunately, nothing has yet to happen for 
Joey here. But you never know, still got a few hours yet. It is a daytime venue. Obviously it's hard to kind of fire yourself up with confidence when nothing's happened for four nights and four days. Uh, but you've always got to keep the faith because you just never know. It literally only takes a minute, doesn't it? Um, but regardless, even if I don't catch anything, obviously to get to film those mega fish for the feature was uh, a real, real treat. Uh, still blown away by the size of that common and the shape of it. Crazy, crazy looking fish. Um, and that's one of the great things about this lake as well, is it's such a mixed bag. I hate going to Lake, well, I don't hate them, but you know, it's not as enjoyable when you're fishing places where all the fish are peas in a pod. Um, and yeah, this is literally like a box of chocolates, this, this lake. Obviously there's been uh, various different strains put in over the years, and then they've actually bred and sort of creating the, their own strain, if you like, the old Church Lake strain. Some of them are just incredible looking carp. Um, and obviously they're, they're growing on and they're gonna be the fish of the future. But yeah, I think there's potentially two 50s in here. Um, one that should be around 50, and obviously the one that Gary caught. 14 40s, and the average size is 34 pounds. So yeah, massive head of massive carp in you know, a relatively small lake. I think it's what's it, about four acres or something. Um, but yeah, if you fancy a little bash down here yourself, then I suggest that you get it booked up soon because this year is already fully booked. Um, I think there's a few spaces next year, but yeah, it's the sort of place that you've got to book a year or two in advance. But if you want to just come and treat yourselves to like a little holiday, then this is definitely a the perfect place to do it, you know, you have a nice social with your mates, you've got the lodge there, um, there's a shower in there, which hasn't quite, I think it's not working at the moment, so yeah, I'm starting to kick up a bit, but that's going to be ready for the new season. Uh, there's a kitchen in there, it, it really does feel like you're on holiday, and obviously a massive head of a uh, really big carp too. Not only that, but it's, you know, it's beautiful scenery, it's really quiet up here can't really hear any road noise. Um, you've got the woods behind, so you've got owls at night. Yeah, yeah it's just a, it's a really nice place to be. I can see why Kev chose this location to dig the lakes in. Um, and again, hats off to you, Kev, because you've done an amazing job here. Obviously, the last time I fished here was 13 years ago, and it's come on so much more since then. Obviously, you know, as trees do, they, they grow a lot. And uh, yeah, the lake's really maturing. It's got a perfect environment for growing big carp, lots of features. Um, yeah, well done for creating a dream lake. On that note, can I come back in the summer, please? <laughs> Pretty please, with a cherry on top. <laughs> well then, mate, there's a, I thought something was gonna happen today, didn't we? Mm, weather's been, yeah, it looked a good day for it, mate, didn't it? Lovely bright sunshine, which is kind of you know what you look for in the spring a lot of the time, isn't it? You mm. know, on that light penetration, hitting them. Yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, them yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it's not. It ain't happened, mate. We've got another what 20 minutes, haven't we? To yeah, but no, yeah, it's been good anyway. It's been enjoyable and it's been a nice trip. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I said on camera earlier. You know, obviously it's never nice blanking, but. I take that on the chin and uh, you know it was a, an awesome result to see to get to film the ones that you caught yeah no it's no you fished hard mate haven't you? you've done every you just yeah it's that one just, spot's produced a couple of bites hasn't it that's yeah, literally been just got to that point didn't it, it? it felt like well, what, what else can you do and yeah i think it's you know it's evident from the lack of activity in the daytime mm. that they're not sort of doing a hell of a lot of feeding but like you said you know another week or two um, it's all going to kick off all over around the country, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're early, aren't we? Well, yeah, we're, what, are we thirteenth? Did we say twelfth or thirteenth March yeah, today? Yeah, it's, it is kind it's, of unseasonably mild, really. Isn't yeah, it? it throws you. It just put, throws you out, doesn't it? That water, still, you know, you put your hand in that water. It's still cold, mate, and it? it's really cold. Um, and like you say, they're not. You know, another ten days down the line, you come and they'll be. We've seen one fish each day, haven't we? I think that's Literally. all we've seen. We've seen one show each day. <laughs> Like I said, you know, oh, from that first evening. Yeah, yeah the first night there was four or five maybe. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that first evening there was four or five over that area where you were fishing. But since other than that, it's been one show every day. A few, you know, they've been active at night a couple of times. But like I say, a week's time you come and you'll be, you'll be seeing, there'll be carp just, 
you know, they'll be catapulting out all over the place, won't they? They'll be bouncing around everywhere, won't they, you know? Yeah. I'm sure, so. I forgot to tell you, last night in the evening, that blooming female swan was sitting in front of my swim all evening, just looking at me, giving me funny looks. Really? Honestly, I'm sure That's she was saying, delete that You'd, footage. Yeah, it's because she'd filmed her, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm. oh, it's funny though, because after they'd uh, you know, done their business, she was cleaning for about two hours, wasn't she? And, he was uh, having a munch and then sitting on the island chilling. Yeah, out. yeah, he was just taking it easy, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, got it sorted, hasn't he? <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been a great few days, Gary. Yeah. Um, yeah, lovely to meet you. And uh, I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Well, yeah. We had met once. We have met, yeah, we met once before, didn't we? Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah nice to get, to get to meet you properly. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll uh, cross paths in the future. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. I've enjoyed it, mate. Right, Thank you. Yes, Thanks mate, for inviting best, me. And well yeah. done again. Cheers, pal. Thanks very much. So every day is a school day. I guess we're always learning, especially when we're out on the bank, um, just observing and uh, thinking. We're always thinking and learning new things. I spent a lot of the last couple of seasons reverting back to uh, my roots of carp fishing, using bottom baits and leg clips. I think us as Schumann sort of go with times and uh, we're very sort of subjected into following trends uh, in the modern day and I sort of ask myself questions of like why am I actually using these sort of tactics when when trying to catch carp because when I first started I'd, I'd use leg clips and bottom baits and catch loads and uh, I didn't really as I progressed as an angler of course I caught a lot more fish but there wasn't something that was substantially better. And uh, I noticed that going back to using bottom baits, um, when the, the spots were clear enough and leg clips, I was getting so many more bites. Being observant and learning, um, I noticed that helicopters, they just get spat out left, right and centre. You're always getting your pants pulled down with them. And uh, they have their time and their place, but this, the hooking arrangement of, of a leg clip is bar none that much better than a, a helicopter set up so yeah that was something that I learned always sort of think back to when you had more success and uh, go back to what you know works don't make it complicated hair rigs I use one rig the blowback rig and um yeah I'll put a shot on it if I'm using a pop-up if I'm not using a little balanced bottom bait or a bottom bait I, I, I take the shot off so yeah I keep it simple and it works for me. Oh, lovely bit of sunlight. Well, I'm ashamed to say it's probably been whew, maybe nearly two months now since I've been out doing my own fishing. Been out, done a couple of little features in that time. Um, but yeah, I've desperately needed to get out on the bank, but I've just been too busy with other bits and pieces, all the editing and what have you. But I've managed to find time for 48 hours and not only that I've got myself a new ticket somewhere a little bit closer to home somewhere I can fish in the winter that's a bit more of a realistic challenge it's only about three acres cracking little lake loads of little dot islands um, I think it's fairly shallow very weedy and yeah there's some really nice fish in here from what I can gather I think there's about 11 or maybe more 30 pounders um, some real nice long ones so yeah, some cool characters to put on the old target list for the uh, coming months ahead. It's a glorious day today. The weather has been carpy as you like. Um, low pressure, good wind, warm wind as well, considering it's now what the end of October. So yeah, should be a lot colder, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> Absolutely lapping this up. Um, we've got low pressure, as I mentioned. We've also got um, a full moon at the moment. I think it was maybe yesterday, or is it tonight? It might be nice tonight actually. Yeah, so there's a big common in here, upper 30 pounder. That's the biggest one in here. Who knows? Could be the night tonight. <laughs> but don't want to be that jammy, do we? Catch the big one on the first night. Let's work our way up to that one. Meet a couple of the others first. Right, enjoy this last hour of sunlight. Get the kettle on. Well, I 
myself in another lovely little sun trap this afternoon. Um, it's a bit calmer on the wind front today as well. Windy when I spoke to you yesterday. And then in the evening it calmed off for a few hours, completely flat calm, dead silent. I can see the full moon out. And then uh, it decided to absolutely tip it down. Raining cats and dogs for hours and hours on end. And then the wind got up again and oh, Bivy was blowing about. I only put a few pegs in it, so. But it was so wet that I didn't even want to go out there and put more in. <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing happened last night. Saw a little bit of bubbling on one of the rods this morning, um, but gave it till sort of late morning, once the rain had stopped. Sun come out, went for a good old mooch about, baited a few little margin spots. And the only place I saw a fish was in this corner, which uh, is like a snaggy corner. And there's a pipe that runs in there, which had obviously been flowing quite a bit because we'd had so much rain. And the water was definitely coloured. And then I saw, saw a fish down in the, in the darkness. Um, so yeah, I packed up, moved around here, put a couple of rods out. And then within an hour, I had a bite on that rod over there and uh, it managed to get in some reeds and unhook itself. I did go around in the waders to see if it was still on, but yeah, it managed to free the hook. Um, so yeah, my bad luck of losing fish continues. However, hopefully I'm going to be able to make amends tonight. Obviously I'll probably disturb that area a bit now, so that's not ideal, but um, from what I can gather it's an area they like, so hopefully they'll be back. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a, a lovely sort of next couple of hours before dark. Um, like I say, I'm tucked out of the wind here and in, in glorious sunshine, so all is well in, in the world. It's not going to be long before it's going to be freezing and miserable. Well, it was this morning and last night, to be fair. So, yeah, every bit of sunshine counts. Thank you, universe. <sighs> Come on, the cops. <laughs> It's a lovely autumnal morning and uh, I'm back down to my old winter ticket water, my second session. I got here yesterday afternoon and before I left on the first session, I spent a good couple of hours mooching about in a boat and that kind of told me everything I needed to know about the lake. Um, it's very shallow, very weedy and there's not a huge amount of spots to be honest with you. And obviously because everyone uses a boat on here all the spots are visible to uh, anyone who's fishing that swim. So I imagine the same spots get fished quite a lot. Anyway, I had a um, little bit of a game plan for this session. Came back down, checked the spots, and a lot of the bait was actually still there in the, in the deeper areas. The shallower areas, the bait had gone, but it could well have been the swans. So um, yeah, I wasn't really sure, but anyway, I avoided the areas that had bait still on them and just fished single solid bags in tasty looking spots and yeah last night i was rewarded with two fish um one come a couple of hours before first light and one was literally at first light so yeah one's in the net one's in the sling and uh it's just about light enough to sort them out so let's have a little look at me prizes but yeah well chuffed for them always nice to get the first one out of a new lake and uh yeah they're cracking fish as well so Awesome start to the day. Happy days. Well, there we go. Absolutely stunning creature. Jet black, mint condition. Mega mouth on it. Just how we like them. Right, let's get this one back and uh, show you the other one. Lovely times. Right, this one is 26 pound and is not happy at all. <sighs> As you can see, another lovely conditioned fish. A little bit paler than the last one. He's got a bit of a dodgy mouth. A bit of an Elvis thing going on. But we won't hold it against him. <laughs> All part of the character, isn't it, mate? Lovely times. Well, it's a gorgeous day. Lovely autumn weather. The sun is shining. Got autumn tones all around us with the leaves and mushrooms everywhere. Yeah. Very nice. Right, get this one back and time for a nice cup of coffee. A well-deserved one at that. Thanks for behaving, mate.
last night was a quiet old night. After them uh, three bites the night before, I did expect a couple, but um, yeah, had a nice night's sleep instead. And then was woken up by this one just before first light. Look at that for a super cool character. It's got that little tail, tiny little pecs, really dark, kind of bluey, purpley color, stubby little dorsal. Yeah, proper character that one. Chuffed to bits. So I say, it's good to get amongst them. Now that's a second session and uh, yeah, I've seen some pictures of some cracking fish in here. So yeah, really looking forward to uh, the winter ahead. But for now, let's get this fella back and uh, celebrate with a nice cup of coffee. Well, one last look at that mega little carp. Look at him. Just love these little waters with such clear water because the fish have immense colours. Go on in, mate, off we go. Nice to meet you. Happy days. Right, well, I began fishing when my dad was in the Royal Navy and he, he used to come on leave and obviously wanted to make up for lost time because he was at sea for up to 18 months at a time. So I never hardly got to see him. So he took me fishing as one of the hobbies we decided to try. I was only six and my dad didn't have a clue about it, to be honest. So I, I saw something just clicked with the fish and I thought, oh, I love this more than anything else. So we used to go fishing for roach and, you know, bream and bits and pieces. Never caught anything reasonable. And then one day we moved to a... a on the Manchester border near South Cheshire. And we went for a day trip to uh, Cape Thorn Hall, which is a stately home. You know what it's like, your mum's always wanting to go somewhere like that, you know, for walk around the gardens and stuff. I thought, oh, this is gonna be boring, this. So I went with them anyhow. And uh, I got out and to my amazement, there was this beautiful stop pond there that you went through and it was like surrounded by massive three, 400 year old, uh, uh, chestnut trees and uh, it was just magnificent you know typical stately on capability brown kind of landscaping thing and I found out that you could get a day ticket and fish it and then there was the it got even better we went down to the main pool and there was an ornamental bridge going across the uh, the middle pool I suppose it was about six acres something like that set next to the whole Cape Thorn Hall and it was just like mind-blowing and we walked on the bridge and there was these monsters that were swimming under the bridge. They were obviously upper doubles or 20s at the time, very few 20s, but upper doubles were like, wow, mind bending. So I couldn't wait to get back. So I went on the stop pond because that was more of a beginner's place. And I guess I, was, I think it was about eight years of age. I caught a six pounder. Oh, I was levitating, you know, punching the air and walking around in a daze. <laughs> Can't believe I've had a monster like that. And then, uh, I got bang into it and then by the time I was 10 I was uh, night fishing you know and sleeping out we didn't have any gear I used to have to improvise and make your own stuff and I, but that that one day trip and that six pounder it sort of started it all off really well I didn't catch it on that day but I went back again you know and still to this day all my memories come flooding back when you go there. Of my whole life as a young man, really, you know, and all through my twenties, I caught my my first ever uh, twenty pounder uh, there as well, and uh, I had the late record for years. That was a, a twenty-eight three that I caught on my twenty-third birthday, and that was an absolute monster then, you know. But yeah, that's where it started, and that's uh, that was the start of 50, 51 years, nearly 52 years worth now, you know. Even though you'd never believe it. <laughs> okay, people, just a quick one. Um, for those who weren't aware, Harp Angle does rely on your contributions to keep going. I've left off all the YouTube adverts because um, I just find them annoying. And also for the amount of views I get, it's not worth monetizing it on YouTube. Um, so all I'm asking is a small contribution from you guys. If you enjoy the show enough and you'd like to keep it on YouTube, then please consider making a small contribution via PayPal. Um, you can do that 
through the link in the info of the video without even having a PayPal account. You can just simply use your card and it's really easy to set up a recurring payment. So uh, yeah, massive thank you to everyone who's set up any form of payment over the last year or so, uh, whether it's a one-off or a regular one, you are the people who's keeping this show going. Obviously the other option is to put it onto a website and charge a monthly subscription fee, um, but I'd much rather keep it on YouTube for all to benefit from and all to enjoy. And obviously it only takes a small percentage of people to chip in a small amount of money to make it worthwhile. Anyway, like I say, I hate talking about money. Um, but some people seem to think I've got loads, which is not true. I'm still trying to pay off my debts and uh, pay my bills and get by. So um, yeah, every little helps. Thanks again. Confessions of a carper. Uh, I was, uh, at the time I was fishing the quarry in Essex, uh, chasing a fish known as Shoulders. I'd spent all summer sort of uh, trying to catch it the first year and the second spring I sort of knew where it liked to get caught from basically and I set up in um, a swim called Bommole on the end of a, a nice sort of southerly and it's just just perfect the most perfect spring weather a nice warm southerly blowing into the bay the fish were there I'd actually been trying to get a bite on camera all morning, thinking I was, you know, I was that confident I was going to catch it. After two or three batteries being drained, um, I eventually got the bite. The camera had switched itself off, got the bite, and five minutes later, shoulders is in the net. Like, and uh, in those days, I used to stake, and still do quite often. I used to stake the uh, landing net pole in you know, out in the lake with the net up, 45 degrees. I got it in the net, did that, rang my mate and said, oh, I've got shoulders. And he said, yeah, he'll come down and uh, do the pictures. And while we were sort of getting ourselves ready, instead of putting it in the sling like I probably should have done, I left it in the net, but I didn't take the hook out. Anyway, he's just turned, Lee's just turned up and he's tried to jump out the net and he's gone, that's gonna jump out the net. He tried a second time and I'm thinking, oh, this isn't too good. Well, the third time, I just remember looking over my shoulder, hearing the fish jump and seeing it clear the top cord of my net and off out into the lake. And because I hadn't unhooked it, it was still attached, but the line was all wrapped around the landing net pole. There was a frantic probably 25, 30 seconds of trying to get the line off as it's trying to take line. Anyway, I've played, played it a second time. It's gone back in the net. And I said, right, I'm putting that straight, that's coming straight out now. Laid it out on the bank and the hook had fallen out in the net. So I guess that one was meant to be. Right, so after that session with Gary on the Church Lake, um, I still had a load of bait left from Willie's Worms and quite a bit of food from Think Food. So, decided to come down my little winter water and uh, God, what an amazing day it is. The days are just getting better and better at the moment. It's been a glorious, bright, sunny morning. Um, I think it's about 11 o'clock now. I've just got here and done a quick lap and with the bait that I had mixed up already in this little bucket from the last session, just popped round and baited up some margin spots. But unfortunately, the clarity of the water is not particularly great. Normally it's crystal clear this lake, so um, yeah, maybe until the weed starts growing, it's, uh, it's not gonna clear up. But anyway, so obviously I'm not able to see the bait in the margins like I'd hope to, um, which is a bit of a pain, but there you go. Can't help be helped. So now I'm gonna get out in the, my mate's little dinghy, which I borrowed off him. Cheers, Luke. And I'm gonna bait up some of the spots that I know from the autumn. Um, like I say, even if I can't see them, I can kind of prime them up, obviously. And then tonight, well, we'll see what happens in the next couple of hours, but I've got a feeling I'm going to drop in the snag swim, which I've already baited up for tonight. And then, as I say, prime up some other areas um, with the option of moving tomorrow. But it's not going to be a lot of bait. It's just going to be a little handful here and there. Um, obviously, it is still spring. They are still waking up. But there is quite a lot of small fish in here. So obviously, with these maggots and casters and bits and pieces, Obviously, if they're already quite lively, then they might be mopping this up quite quickly. So 
gonna make a mix up just really quickly. It's got some mainline hemp. And what I do with that is the night before I go fishing, I just pour a kettle's worth of water in there and put a bit of hemp oil and a little bit of smart liquid um, just to kind of boost it up really. And then some tigers, which again, won't be loads, just a couple of handfuls of them in there. Oh, three handfuls. Um, I'm gonna have a pint of casters. Pint of reds. And a pint of pinkies. Obviously, you rarely see people using pinkies. It's normally just maggots, but they're that much smaller. So, um, you know, you'd think it would just keep them, keep them there longer, take, take them longer to get through them. Once they realise what they are, they're just going to be um, destroying them hopefully before another carp gets a look in. That's the plan man. Oh, I think that'll do for now. Maybe just a third of a tin of sweet corn that was left from the other day. A little bit of yellow. Ah, there's some cell boilies in there as well. So yeah, I'll add a few of them and then uh, I'll get the boat pumped up and uh, go and bait a couple of spots, but I'm gonna leave the camera on the bank because I don't trust myself. <laughs> a couple of handfuls of uh, 15 minutes, coated in smart liquid, and a couple of handfuls of 10 minutes, also well coated. Oh, and for good measure, better get some of the old liquid gold in there as well. Right, well, I had a lovely little float around in the boat. What a gorgeous day it was for that. Um, there wasn't a lot to see because of the clarity, but I did kind of bait up a few little spots, sort of ones that I remembered from the uh, autumn when the water was clear, and then also some other ones which I was just able to fill with the uh, prodding stick, which I used two sections of the bushwhacker for. Perfect for that, really. A, that gives me an option of somewhere to drop onto if it's not happening here tonight, and B, it means that you know I can start applying a little bit of bait to those spots regularly every time I come down here. I'm probably gonna have a little go on here for the next month or so because there's some really, really nice fish in here. And obviously it's fairly local for me. It's sort of only half hour or so. Um, yeah, St. Ives sort of took a little while to wake up last year. So I don't wanna sit up there struggling um, when I could be elsewhere enjoying myself. Um, like I say, some of the fish in here, real stunners, they got up to sort of just under 40 pound. Lovely common, that one. And then I think there's about 14 or 13 other 30s in here, but some real sort of long ones, a real variety of fish, and obviously that's what I love about my fishing. So hopefully we're gonna to get to meet one or two of them. For tonight, I'm gonna to jump into this corner here, which is what I think it's known as the snag corner. Um, there's a, a snaggy area to the right. There's some reeds down here and I'm gonna fish them all washing line style. So as far as the fish are aware, there's no lines in the water and hopefully they're gonna be less on edge as a result of that. The main spot, the one that I fished um, in the autumn last year, which I think is the main one that most people fish, I'm not gonna put a rod to that one because I can't wash in line it. So I think rather than having that line going through the water, I've just baited that spot up. So they're gonna be able to go in there, have a little munch. And then the other spots I've got are sort of dotted around that uh, vicinity. So yeah, hopefully it's gonna happen, but I shall keep you posted. For now, I've got to get these rods out. I've already cast three leads across, got my rigs in my bucket. Just gonna put a little solid bag on and then spoon it out with the bushwhacker and uh, yeah, sit back and enjoy the sunshine. Happy days. What's up here? Eh? What's up?
้งสาบไหมสาบไหมมันเชื่อว่าน้อยยังไงโอ้ก็น่าจะอยู่น่าฝนนะเว้ยเราทำไปทำไปสวิมใช่แล้วกินสุนัขไปเราจะกินกินกินกินกินกิน With sesame seeds, that's going to bring any mice back to life. Hey, go on, mate. We munch on. Lovely, very tasty. Well, the sad news is Mickey the mouse didn't make it. I'm not sure what was up with him, but um, I think maybe he'd been dropped by a bird or something, you know, because it was like he'd broken his back. But you could tell he was on his way out. Um, so yeah, I thought at least he didn't die alone. I brought him back to Miss William and uh, tried to give him a bit of food, but obviously you're not gonna really be hungry if you've got a broken back. I thought about finishing him off, you know, like putting him out of his misery, but oh, I just don't like doing that. It's not very nice, is it? So yeah, I let him die a slow, painful death instead, which probably seems pretty cruel as well. But anyway, he went in the end. And uh, I was going to bury him, but then I thought, well, I might as well leave him as an offering for the magpies. Hopefully, they'll bring me some luck. Um, but yeah, R.I.P. Mickey, sweet dreams, brother. It was nice meeting you. Um, the moon's rising over the back there. The sun's just set. It was a pathetic sunset. It wasn't even worth filming. It was just grey set. Never mind, hopefully there'll be a nice sunrise in the morning to make up for it. Howling at the moon. Come on the big cups. Yo, yo, yo. Well, gave it 24 hours in the snags. Wasn't feeling it, didn't have any indications. And uh, yeah, moved around to the gravel corner. Got the rods out sort of early afternoon. And then this one, just, oh, just, oh, I'm so angry because it came in so quickly. Oh, just before sunset, but there was no sunset because it's so gray. Oh, it's gonna do me. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Oh, my little tail. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mate, calm down and I'll get you back quicker, I promise. <laughs> the tail's lethal, isn't it? Right, look at him. Just under 36 pounds. Massive, long Leviathan. <laughs> Buzzing with that one, made up. Oh, let's get a bit of water on him. He's got a little bit frothy, hasn't he? Yeah, that's a cool one. He's obviously had a good winter because he's, uh, yeah, he's doing well. It's looking pretty plump. Mega head on him as well. Oh. Oh. There we go. Lovely, jubbly. Oh, yeah, as I say, it's been a grey and drizzly all day today, but mega carpy conditions after them sort of couple of warm days. And then tomorrow we've got a couple of warm days as well. So tomorrow and the next day we've got a couple of warm days. <sighs> right, I'm going to have a quick snap of you, mate, and then we'll get you back. <sighs> Buzz in. Yo, 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 here we go with the flow. My name is Joe, and I'm a little bit cold. 
Well, it's a lovely morning. Sun's just rising over the back there. The moon's just set behind us. And uh, yeah, still got a buzz from that mega carp. It was a bit rushed to be honest with you because when I caught it, it was like half five and sunsets at six, but it was so gray. There just was hardly any light. So I was trying to rush to get it done whilst there was enough light, but there just wasn't. So I had to put the light on and yeah, the pictures turned out pretty rubbish to be honest. Um, but yeah, there you go, never mind. I'm happy to quite catch it. But I've got some news for you because um, I was looking at some pictures last night and it turns out that was the big one. Um, strange because it came out a couple of weeks ago at like 38 pounds. So um, yeah, weird that it's dropped so much, unless I need to get my scales checked. But um, yeah, anyway, regardless of the weight, well happy to have caught uh, the biggest fish in the lake. He might not be the biggest if he's that size, you know. I think there's others that could potentially be a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll get to find out. What I didn't mention is actually a full moon this week and it's the uh, worm moon. So I've got about a kilo of worms with me. Maybe I should chop some of them up and put them in my mix today. The full moon is tonight. Um, yeah, well, it did look pretty blooming spectacular this morning. So yeah, there's another guy turning up today. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a couple more with the old full moon in it. It's gonna be a glorious day. Yesterday was just grey and drizzly most of the afternoon and evening. It didn't stop raining. And the wind got up quite a bit as well. It was pretty carpy old weather. I was surprised that I didn't catch another one in the night, but hey ho, there you go. Um, so potentially Mickey Mouse brought me a bit of luck. Maybe, you know, looking after him and making sure he didn't die alone. And then I buried him in the end because he didn't get eaten off the tree stump by the uh, magpies or crows. So I thought I'll, uh, I'll give him a little burial and feed him to the uh, mycelium network instead because, um, well, they're more fun guys than the... Uh, Magpies anyway, aren't they? <laughs> Terrible joke. Right, well, I decided to have a little move. Um, gave it to about midday where I was round in that corner. And I'm regretting moving in some ways because I was in a sun trap there and I'd probably be laying on my bed chair with my uh, top off right now, lapping it up. However, I'm sitting on the end of this chilly wind instead. But obviously, as you can see, still basking sunshine. So uh, no complaints. Got my rods out, um, like I said, a couple of the spots that I've prepped up already and one on a, a different little area just off the corner of that island there. Um, yeah, pretty happy with how I'm fishing. Let's hope the fish are about. I did uh, manage to kind of, not fully fall in, but I've kind of face planted the water <laughs> and got pretty wet. So uh, yeah, had to go and change my clothes. Just can't believe how nice this weather is. Um, yeah, there's another guy's turned up, so he's uh, sounds like he's had quite a few out of it in his time. Um, certainly knows what he's doing. So yeah, be uh, hopefully I'll be doing some pictures for him at some point. I did have a line about 20 minutes ago as well, so uh, yeah, I reckon there's going to be fish about. It could just be a matter of time. A matter of time before I catch a coot in a moment. Shh, shh. Where's my tufty torch? All right, get out of it. Shh. Big moon chunk for me last night, unfortunately, but obviously 
not disappointed because I had the big one the night before. So happy days. Yeah, it's been another few uh, cracking days in the sunshine, lapping up the spring vibes, watching all the nature come to life. Yeah, very enjoyable. Anyway, I think that pretty much brings us up to date now with a diary. Like I had a few bits and pieces from uh, the winter, but they were pretty much just blank sessions and yeah, not much of a story there. So probably won't even bother editing them. And then from now on, as I say, the, the diary will be up to date. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna return to St. Ives. Probably, well, next week I've got to edit all week. And then the week after, I'm filming with Alan Blair, going somewhere pretty cool actually. I've sacrificed the guest session that I was meant to get at some point um, for Alan to have it instead so that I can film him. And yeah, this lake is just full of monsters by the sounds of it. So uh, yeah, hopefully I'm gonna be able to get some really cool footage and see some really epic carp. Right, I'm going to give it another couple of hours in the sunshine because that sun's swinging around now, so it's sort of prime position at this time of day. And the uh, bush that I'm fishing to down to the right, that gets the sun sort of from now onwards as well. So I reckon there's still a last chance saloon opportunity. I'll keep plugging away, but for now, lap up the sunshine. And uh, yeah, if I don't see you before, I shall see you next month.